This is a self-reconnecting reverse shell. This is a listener that automatically upgrades your terminal session. And this is a reverse shell manager that handles multiple connections. In this video, I will show you this awesome tools you never probably heard before. For demonstration purposes, I spin up a Vagrant virtual machine that will serve as our victim. The first tool we will see is Pondcat. We pass dash L with the port where we are listening for callbacks. Then next is the thing I really like, which is the self-inject feature. Once Pondcat receives the first connection from the victim, it will launch a background process that continuously connect to our listener. So every time we got disconnected, we can just open a listener again and we will expect a connection immediately. We need to pass some options to the self-inject parameter, such as the shell to use. The attacker IP and port. Now let's trigger the reverse shell from the victim machine. We see here that Pondcat was able to catch the first connection. It performs the self-injection process on the victim by running the following command. Then after that, we can now interact with the client. Let's try to disconnect. Then run Pondcat again, but this time we don't need the self-inject parameter since it is already running inside the victim machine. We can just start Pondcat in standard listener mode, but with added verbosity. We got a connection again. We can do this infinite times and we will always get a callback. This is really handy, especially if there are cases where running a reverse shell is very difficult and involves several steps. We can just use Pondcat with its self-inject functionality. Since the connection is just like any other TCP reverse shell, we can also catch it with other tools. For example, if we are successful in injecting the process on the target, we can catch it with Netcat. Aside from using a single listener port, we can also use multiple ports. Let's say we want to launch various reverse shells that will connect to us. We can increase the number of ports here. Once Pondcat received the first connection, it will do the self-inject, but this time it will launch several background processes for each port. Then we can set up multiple listeners. Aside from reverse shells, Pondcat can also use for bind shells, port forwarding, file transfers, and port scanning. Downside with this tool is that you still need to upgrade your shell terminal and the project is no longer actively maintained. A newer and more lightweight alternative is RCAP. The thing I like here is that it automatically upgrades your shell terminal. We just need to pass the dash dash pond parameter and it will do the rest. No more typing several commands again. Aside from automatically upgrading the shell terminal, we can also perform encrypted reverse shell connections. You can also use this tool to capture TLS connections, which is good for quickly inspecting the headers and content body of a request. And lastly, the project is actively maintained. Only downside, I think, is it doesn't have the self-inject feature like Pondcat, but we can always combine the two. For example, we can launch the self-inject in Pondcat, then catch it with RCAT so that your shell will automatically be upgraded. The last tool is called Penelope. This is a more sophisticated tool that can maintain multiple reverse shell connections, but it do more things than that. If we start Penelope, it will wait for the callback from the victim. Once it catched it, it tries to upgrade your shell like what RCAT is doing. At any time, I can exit from the session without fully disconnecting by hitting my escape key. Then if I enter sessions, we see here the active reverse shell connection. Now, here's the good part. If we type maintain two, it will trigger another reverse shell connection from the client, giving us a total of two connections. Let's say we want to interact with session two and we accidentally killed the connection. Penelope will trigger again another reverse shell connection in order to maintain the one we specified, which is to have always two reverse shell connections at any given time. So this is like a persistence mechanism, also similar to Pondcat. Penelope is like a command and control center, but designed only for reverse shells. That means we can go to a session and run some module without fully interacting with the remote shell. For example, we can run LinPs. It will download it in your attacker machine and upload it to the target. This is really handy because you will save time transferring this to the victim as you normally would do. Then the output of the script is redirected to a log file inside your attacker machine. That means if you get disconnected, the script will still run in the background and you can just tail the log file. There are other modules that we can use. We can use this module to upload the privilege escalation scripts to the target if we want to run them manually there inside an interactive shell session. Or we can trigger other scripts other than LinPs. There are also some pivoting and forensics modules. 
There are other notable reverse shell tools that I didn't include in this video. Another one is this tool, which is reverse shell based from SSH protocol. There is also Villain, which can be used with Hope Shell that can possibly bypass some antivirus engine and reverse shell as a service, which leverage a public endpoint to trigger a callback. You can refer more on the description for the links to the tools. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.